Thank you and welcome. We really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much, Lisa. And just so you all know, to that end of improving your business, I will say that adding functional medicine to your business as a Chinese medicine doctor is just a slam dunk. And the acupuncturists that are doing this work now are adding a whole new dimension to their business. More patients are coming to them because of their knowledge that they have that is so much more advanced just in terms of getting to root causes of diseases and putting them into remission. And it's the perfect pairing. So I wanted to come on today to, to let you all know what's possible and how I started this journey eight years ago when I turned 50. And I said, I, what do I want to do with my life? Hey, Peter, there he is. So I started this because I wanted to help other people. I had an autoimmune disease myself that I was sick with for 20 years, and I had put myself almost into remission through a ton of research search, but I decided to go back to school for this. And it's been the best thing I've ever done. And I get to work with people like Peter and Lisa and just people that are struggling with health issues. And I'm able to take them from massive goals with their health to remission. And it's just the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And I really love that Peter's on with us today because Maybe Peter, before I get into telling who I am and everything about me, Peter might want to say a little bit about what his struggles were and how he's doing now, just to let you all know what's possible, because I'm just blown away by his success. And I'm not surprised by it at all, because we've had similar success stories in our practice. But to Lisa's point, he's positive and he's a willing participant. And with our guidance and figuring out all the root causes, which I'm going to show you, he's been generous enough to share the labs. So I'm going to show, uh, allow us to sh allow me to share his labs, show you what I saw and what we're doing to put this Parkinson's into remission. And Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we first started, you were falling a lot. You also were having these freezing episodes where you'd be somewhere and you'd freeze up, which is co coincides with stage five Parkinson's. Like it's a very advanced stage. Not that you had all those symptoms, but you definitely had that constipation, exhaustion. You weren't sleeping at night. Tell us a little bit about some of the symptoms and what you were dealing with day to day. Yeah. So about a year ago, I started to have progression of symptoms. And the falling started almost exactly a year ago at this time. And that's, that was quite disconcerting to be standing and then all of a sudden find myself on the ground. That was something that was new. If I can back up a little bit, I first had symptoms about eight to 10 years ago. And the very first symptom that I had was a tremor in my right hand. And I didn't think anything of it. I just shook it out, thought I had a cramp and it persisted and then eventually about a year or two after that both my hands and arms were had shaking and it was it's been a gradual progression of symptoms over the years stuttering is one of the more recent symptoms so i apologize that's okay i'm not able to speak as well as i could but to answer your question yeah about Six to nine months ago, the falls were happening. I did get OT and PT to try to help with that. But the freezing episodes also were bradykinesia, slow movements. It, it's not actually slow movements, it's inability to move. That's why we call them freezing episodes. And those were happening a lot. You were losing your independence in a way that Lisa had to be nearby and had to accompany you to go grocery shopping and even oh, yeah. they needed to be nearby if you were showering and things like that. So talk right. about that as well. I had to stop working in December of 2020 because I couldn't control my hands to do acupuncture for people. So that was a big change in my life to say the least. And I'm sorry, what was your question again? So now you've been able to be more independent, right? You, oh, you right. went to the grocery store by yourself and right. showering without having to have any Lisa nearby and things like that. It was remarkable. Within maybe two to three weeks after starting the supplements that you had recommended, I started noticing changes and it, in the beginning, it wasn't as noticeable, but as time went by, I would suddenly realize, or Lisa would say, hey, you're not doing this, or you're not doing that. And so that was really 
great to see improvement that soon after starting the supplements. And also you you had some relief from some symptoms, like you're able to sleep through the night, your bowel movements were better. All these things got better, right? Yes, absolutely. Sleep was, was particularly difficult. I would get maybe two or three hours a night ongoing week after week and month after month. I had trouble getting out of bed, just physically pushing down on the mattress to get out of bed was hard for me. And to get back into a pattern of being able to sleep now, like six to seven to eight hours a night, it's been really life-changing because of, of, of course, that has a, a tremendous effect on my energy level that I have available during the day. It used to be I'd have to calculate, do I have enough energy to do this one thing today or should I wait till tomorrow? And now I can do multiple things in the same day and I still have energy to spare in the, in the evening. That's wonderful. And I just want to point out that Peter has chosen not to do any medication for his Parkinson's. So the tremoring was actually a lot worse when we started. He's doing so much better now. I think it's a visible difference and they, we still have work to do. Clearly, we're only about five or six months into working together. And uh, I, just the improvement's been remarkable. So thank you so much for coming on and telling a little bit of your story. And I want to just explain a little bit about you know, what I, what I saw in your lab. So if everyone can understand that and then how you guys, if you're interested, can get this training as well to be able to do this work in your practice. And I know Lisa and Peter have referred others with Parkinson's to me because they've seen such amazing improvement with Peter. And yeah, this is how I built my practice. I have people all over the world coming to me to see me because I'm good at what I do because of the training I had. So I'm not smarter than any of you. I'm just frankly better trained with what, how to help people with any kind of health issue. And I'll show you some other issues I've been working with, but Lisa, I think you had a slide on that, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> I'll show that in a second, but first I just okay. want to say, if I can just add a little bit to what, first I want to thank Peter for being on this call because he didn't have to do it. And it's nerve wracking and stress can make symptoms worse. And I have so much respect for what he's going through and how he's faced this challenge for the last really 10 years, but in particular the last three, four years. So thank you for being here, P. I really do. I really sincerely appreciate it. I think that you are going to impact a lot of people just by having the courage to show up here. So thank you for that. The other piece of this is that Peter and I were talking about this the other night. I think that we didn't realize how bad his symptoms had gotten until we started working with you, Jody, and then he got better. Like we were like, wow, you can take a shower now and I don't have to be in the house. You can actually drive the car and do grocery shopping and you're not afraid of freezing in the grocery store anymore. You can go put gas in the car, whereas before you were nervous about doing that because you were afraid you'd need help putting the gas cap on or something. So many little things, little things too, that seem little, which actually freed up our life and really impacted our day-to-day -day stuff since we started working with you and started seeing the changes. So we didn't realize like how bad they were, like you're grading them at a four or five on the Parkinson's scale, which I didn't actually even know about. And I was like, oh no, it wasn't that bad. But yeah, you know what? When you think back, you just adapt to things. That's what life hands you challenges, you adapt. And so we had adapted, but now that we see the progress, it's so exciting. It's, and it just has changed our, our life, of course, but also our entire mindset. So I hope that for all everybody out here listening to this, whether it's today or in a recording, I hope you know that word hope is so essential to getting better. And Parkinson's doesn't just affect the person who has it. It's the whole support team around. Everybody's affected. And so <laughs> Peter's the one making the progress, but we're all, it's a tumbling effect there. Thank you, Jody, for that. And I'll try to find that slide, that little picture. You go ahead and share, but I do want to say, <laughs> let me see if I can find it real quick. No, here. that's okay. I, I just, the other thing <laughs> to your point with that, I mean, I, uh, I remember even just making appointments, you were like, Peter can do it now. Like right? all these things, like every little step. It's oh, Peter, no, fly, baby, fly. You got this. So which, um, which it was freed up my time. Progression. And um... <laughs> here you go. <laughs> this is the point I wanted to make is that look, the Jody is over here in Massachusetts. We're way over here in Washington State, right outside Portland, Oregon, actually. And 
to do this medicine, unlike acupuncture, where we're, we rely on people that are local that can come through our clinic doors, when you add something like this, the way that the School of Applied Functional Medicine teaches it, your able, your patient base expands. And this is crazy to me. And Jody, weren't you just saying that you were on a call today with someone in another country, right? In Germany, yeah. yeah. I work with people worldwide. And honestly, I have not done any advertising. And I just started doing this work as I was going through the school, I was implementing it into my practice. So as an acupuncturist, you could say, hey, Mary, you've been coming to me with headaches for for two years now. And I know the acupuncture helps, but what if we were to get to the root causes of why you have headaches in the first place and reverse them? So you don't really need the, you might put yourself out of business with acupuncture. However, that person will tell like 50 people about you and how they should come to you for help. So what about if you have joint pain, why not go upstream and figure out why they have joint pain in the first place? and what can be done about it. So I've helped so many people with chronic pain, whatever reason they're coming to you, you can get to the root causes and reverse them. And you'll have people referring people from all over the world. So I work via zoom worldwide, and you can do this as an acupuncturist, even if you're only licensed in your state, you can do this work, check with the laws in your state and everything, but you can do this as a more health consultant. And that way you're leaving your license behind. You can still practice in your office, but the contract says you're working as a health consultant. And so you can broaden your appeal worldwide. And I will tell you, I know we, we put this in the title, but Lisa and Peter paid, they paid me $10,000 to work with them. And these are the packages that I sell now. Now I can slide my scale if somebody's really destitute and I really want to work with them, but just about everyone in 99% of my clients are paying full price. And the school that I went to, one client would pay for the whole school. So you can be in a position where you do this investment and you start using this stuff in your practice. And all of a sudden you are getting referral after referral. I made enough money to pay for the entire school before my first semester was over. And there's two semesters in school. And so you can do this work and add it to your practice and, and charge more per visit instead of charging what you charge for your acupuncture visit. You could charge many times over that because you'll have a skill set that honestly, very few acupuncturists on the planet have. And that's a great place to be. But more importantly, you'll be able to help people like I'm helping Peter. I'm choked up just listening to the changes it's made in his life. And I do this every day. It is the most gratifying thing I've ever done in my life. And you all can have this power. It's like almost having a superpower. I cannot believe what I'm capable of. And I don't even have the Chinese medicine background that you all have. I had to go to school first for nutrition, which was, <laughs> didn't learn very much in that school. And then I went on to this school. You already have the prerequisites to go to this school. So I'm going to show you, yeah. share my screen. If While that's you're okay. sharing your screen, Jody, I'm going to jump in. Cause you know, I do that, right. I interrupt all the time, <laughs> <laughs> jump in all you want. But I said the $10,000 thing, it, it's a big, it's a big number. And it's not like we had this like sitting around, but when you, when you, it depends on what you value, right? It depends on, and there are patients who are wanting this aspect added to their care. They are going to naturopaths and other functional medicine practitioners that I believe do not have this level of training to not just do the testing, but then figure out what to do based on the testing. I think that's what's different. And so when I was just talking to Jody as a, as of just a colleague and friend, and she mentioned that she'd worked with pa patients with Parkinson's and she was confident that she could help Peter. Those are the words that got my attention. I had never heard another practitioner and Peter and I had been to neurologists and primary care practitioners and acupuncture. We've been to all kinds of other people who've been hopeful and helpful, but nobody said I'm confident I'm confident that I can help you. Like that just struck me. And so I was like, really? And then from there, it's Jody has kept her word. She's helped us a lot. So having that level of confidence, I think changes everything and being able to express that to a patient in front of you, it changes their life. I'm so glad you brought that up because there are so many levels of functional medicine training and you could do a five-day intensive, which is what another school offers. And it's great. You get a good basic education and stuff like that. Those people are calling themselves functional medicine practitioners after five days. 
the program I've gone through is two years plus, depending on how you pace it. And you could take up to four years if you want. It's like a master's degree. And they honestly could charge like 10 times as much because the education you get is crazy. It's so good. And I've had clients that have been to functional doctors and not gotten anywhere with it and came to me and I've been able to figure it out even in my first semester at the school because the training is that good. And you have all these resources, which I'll explain in a minute, but let me just show you guys. And there is a question here, Jody oh, from sure. Jill asking, is there a way to blend functional medicine and support clients with Parkinson's who choose to be on medication and go the Western doctor route? So Peter's not on medication, but what about Parkinson's patients who are on medication? Are you able to help them? A hundred percent. Actually, I oftentimes I'll have clients that come to me that have been on 12, they're on 12 medications when they start with me. And as we're working together and addressing all the root causes going upstream, they're able to wean off their medications to the point where maybe they're done and they don't have any, or maybe they have one maintenance medication that they need to continue to take like a thyroid medication or something. Usually we get them off their medications with the help of their provider. So I have them go back to the prescriber when they're at a place of strength to talk about weaning off. And you'll learn all about deprescribing in the school. There's a whole course on that. But if you're not the one who prescribed it, I recommend you send them back to the prescriber, especially if you're working as a health consultant or health coach, you can't get into that, but I can advise them. I can give them the pros and cons. I can say, okay, Peter, look at your labs now. Look at these levels. They've come way down. I don't think, I think you need to talk to your doctor about the possibility of weaning off this medication. The doctors love it because they're like, their patients are getting better. And they're like, yeah, you don't need your blood pressure medicine anymore. No way. Your blood pressure is going too low. Let's take you off that medication. So we do that all the time. Absolutely. Any more questions or can I no, I just want to ask Peter, why did you decide not to do any medication? Because the, probably the, the typical person that you work with, Jody, they're on medications because that's the typical route that people go. So sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Peter, why did you decide not to do the what your neurologist recommended? It was twofold. I'm concerned about the side effects of the medications, many of which are similar to the Parkinson symptoms that I already have. So why would I choose to have worsening of the symptoms because of that? But secondly, my health coach, Howard Schiffke, who's in Oregon, he was able to overcome his Parkinson's without getting on medications for those same reasons. And he's been symptom-free for over 12 years. So I've had that personal interaction with someone who's done what I'm trying to do. And he gives me so much encouragement that I'm very appreciative of that. That's wonderful. Great. I want to go ahead and show you all a little bit about me and what I did and how you can do this too, if you're interested. And just a little bit about what I did with Peter as well. Whoops. I actually show you this one, but anyway, I actually mentioned I had an autoimmune disease. I had chronic urticaria. I had hives all over my, over, all over my body for 20 years. And I, found out that when I was eating more cleanly, my symptoms were lessened. And when I turned 50, I decided this is what I want to do, help others get better. And I went back to school first for nutrition. I started my practice. My first few cases, I was way over my head because the nutrition piece was not helping. I had someone with chronic diarrhea, I had all these skin issues, all these things that diet alone was not helping. Diet alone can help maybe half of it, but it can help all of it. So I really struggled to get clients and I honestly charged very little for my services. I had imposter syndrome, but fast forward to today, I actually met Tracy Harrison. She's the founder and lead educator for the School of Applied Functional Medicine. And I wound up going to the School of Applied Functional Medicine. I It's the best decision I've ever made professionally, best school I've ever been to professionally. So we're going to tell you more about that in a minute, but I got confident and competent at what I was doing. Um, my clients started telling people about me and I have since raised my rates tenfold plus since starting the school. And even within my first semester, I was able to triple my rates, which was just great. So I was able to quit my part-time job and do this work more full-time. And now I've expanded my practice. I offer group sessions. I offer, I have two MDs and two nurse practitioners in my practice now. So I do the initial session. And for a lot of my clients, I hand them off to another, to another practitioner to work with the subsequent sessions because I can't work with everybody coming to me. I've just leveraged myself so hugely and I'm passionate about what I do. 
And people have started coming to me from everywhere, even Oregon. I want to show you a little bit about Peter's labs and what I saw, because, you know, if any of you can read lab work, and I know many of you can't, but that's okay. Most uh, physicians would look at this and say, well, you might be a little dehydrated here. Your albumin's just slightly over the reference range. And then your vitamin D... Jody, Sorry. it's a little hard to read. So the things that you're pointing out that are in, that are bold, could you just say what they are? Like it, you're looking at albumin is high and the A to G ratio is high. The albumin globulin ratio is a little high. Okay. And also the vitamin D was clinically low. So any doctor might say, oh, maybe do some electrolytes and take some vitamin D and send you on your way. Or they might put you on a high dose D2, which is I think a really bad idea. But the everything else look within reference range. So they might say, oh, you're all set. But I see things differently. And I'm not going to go into every detail here, but these were all clues for me that he might have some congestion in his liver and gallbladder system, the hepatic biliary tree, that system. He pro So he also had a more acidic state and probably some macrocytic anemia as well as some uh, immune system dysregulation. So I saw that in these labs and said, okay, we need to order some follow-on labs to see what's going on. And one of the things you need to convert vitamin D to its final form is magnesium. And you can see here on the bottom, magnesium is 5.4, which is within reference range. And most doctors would say, oh, you're fine. I knew that is not an optimal range. You really wanna be much higher. And magnesium is critical to relieve constipation. It's critical for methylation, which is important in overcoming Parkinson's. V vitamin D requires the magnesium to convert to its final form. So that's probably one of the reasons he was low in vitamin D. And it also stimulates GABA receptors, which is critical for his gait, the walking. Why is he falling so much? This could be part of, this is a clue to me. Why and part of the GABA glutamate balance is always skewed when it comes to Parkinson's as well. So, one of the first things we did was get you on some magnesium. I know that helped you on so many fronts. The other thing that your doctor didn't flag is the TSH was 3.19, and conventional doctors are trained to say that's fine, that's in, in the middle of the reference range, you're fine. But to me, that's subclinical elevation in TSH. So, what's going on with his thyroid? He rated his energy two out of 10. So I said, let's pull our full thyroid panel and see what's going on. And sure enough, his reverse T3 was way over the top of the reference range. This is telling me there's issues with adrenals and thyroid affecting the thyroid. And his free T3 was really suboptimal. I like to see that a full point higher for him. So no wonder he might've had issues with constipation between the magnesium and the slow sluggish thyroid, that alone can be a recipe for a disaster. And that usually precipitates the Parkinson's. That's usually one of the first thing that happens for Parkinson's. So you can see the disease, this recipe for Parkinson's is right here. And he had some low levels of immune nutrients here, like vitamin A and copper. Again, subclinical, subclinically low, but, but mo and most doctors would not flag this. They're not trained to, in fact, and that's fine. But when you learn functional medicine, you can look at your patient's everyday annual physical lab work from the last couple of years and glean so much information as to what might be going on with them that you can help them just with this. Even if you just did this and charged $200 for a visit, imagine having a few clients a day coming to you for that. And then they'll tell their friends about you and so on. And most people are charging more than that per visit, by the way. But so we went and did some follow-on labs and we found that he had really high levels of fusarium, which is a mold. Look at the reference range, four to nine, he's at 24. And then he had some aflatoxins, which I know, I think you were eating some peanut butter back then. It's mm -hmm. high in aflatoxins and ochratoxin was one of the ones that was flagged as well. And guess what? These are, guess what the number one issue with Fusarum is, or one of the top reasons, or one of the top contributors to Parkinson's is having high levels of this mold. So this was something that we address. There's some targeted supplements that we could pull, some lifestyle changes that we could do to get this mold out. And we're working on that now with Peter. It's going to take time. That's why he's not 100% yet. We're only about five or six months in, but we're going to have, I imagine how much he's going to improve in the next six months working with him. So you could see this was a big, really a notable elevation in mold toxicity. 
We also did some environmental toxins and we found that he had several high levels of toxicity. And guess what? Three of these are highly associated with central nervous system dysfunction, which is Parkinson's, right? So we need to address these and pull these out of his system. And then we did heavy metal. And I could not believe the high levels of cesium in his body. I know that Peter grew up in his early years in Japan, and and he may have picked up some radioactive material from that, from growing up there. And it could have been in his system for years and years. And now that he's older, loses a little bone loss and it comes out and, and may trigger Parkinson's disease as well. So these are things that we noticed and that we're working with now so that he can pull these elements out of his body. And sometimes you need to use a prescriptive agent and refer him out to somebody who might be able to give him a prescription for something that would help pull cesium out of his body. But anyway, then we did a stool test because disease truly begins in the gut. And we found that there was some pathogenic parasites. And so that alone can be a trigger for Parkinson's disease. So we're dealing and we're addressing that to get that out of his system. But also we saw some H. pylori, which can interfere with digestion. We saw some low levels of butyrate, which is really important for your colonocytes. And he had no levels below detectable levels. He also had really low levels of good commensal bacteria. Maybe he did a course of antibiotics that may have caused that even as a kid having an ear infection can wipe out some of the good bacteria and make way for these opportunistic bacteria. And interestingly enough, the ones that he's highest in, these are crazy high levels of strep and staph. Guess what they are noted for? Parkinson's. We find high levels of both of these in Parkinson's disease. So if we were to put together a recipe for how to give someone Parkinson's disease, I would give them an overgrowth of strap, of staph and strep and some parasites and some cesium toxicity and some fusarium toxicity and low levels of magnesium and low levels of zinc and vitamin A, all these things that were showing up in his labs. Is it any wonder that he has these issues? Now, I'm not going to go through the entire treatment plan with you, but we are doing this one step at a time but he's seeing massive improvement as we're continuing to pull these things out of his system and balance his immune system. We also saw this is a big problem for Parkinson's is having, I mentioned the hepatic biliary tree, this fat showing up in the stool in high levels. So this is showing that there's congestion there and it, you cannot detoxify if you have a gunked up liver system, right? So we worked with him on that, on degunkifying the liver and improving his digestion and also boosting his secretory IgA because when it's low, your immune system is asleep at the wheel. That could be because of the Giardia, that could be a num or because of the strap and staph, but it's like a vicious cycle. So we had to build up those levels too of secretary IGA. But anyway, and then of course, these are also associated with Parkinson's disease. But I did want to show you before we go any further, I don't know if there's any questions about the case. Anything coming in, Lisa? I just saw one. Let me see where it is. Tabitha is letting us know. I just want to point this out that CMNF insurance, which is an insurance that a lot of us use for our malpractice insurance, they'll cover as a coach in addition to acupuncture and, and our medicine. So that was good to know. Thank you, Tabitha, for sharing that. And I thought Tabitha actually was the one who had a question in here. Okay, here it is. Even though it's called functional medicine, you don't actually need to use a medical degree to practice it, right? Meaning you can use it outside of the state you are licensed in. Can you talk more about that? Thanks. Sure. Yeah. I'm not a medical practitioner at all. My background was in nutrition first, and then I went into this so you, the school that I went to allows acupuncturists to go to this school, any medical or health professional that is in active practice. So if you're retired, you might have to speak to an admissions counselor just to make sure that it's a good fit for you because they want you using this in your practice. But from what I understand that, and everyone's doing this, I mean, there's nurse practitioners in the school, there's nurse practitioners and doctors in my practice that are doing this as coaches, because they want to be able to cross state lines, and they want to be able to work with my clients. So I know it's like, taking a little step back, like calling yourself a coach and because you went to school for all those years for Chinese medicine, but but you can actually do this work as a coach, and nobody cares what my title is, they just want to know I can help them. 
and I have people coming from me to me from all over the world. In fact, I want to show you a few of my clients that I worked with. I started showing this, but this is Beth. And she came to me my very first semester and she had fibromyalgia, extreme fatigue, chronic urticaria, debilitating migraines, GI issues, insomnia, depression, obesity, and was on Vicodin every day for her pain. She was in bed by noon and couldn't be a mom to her kids because she was so exhausted and in such pain from the migraines and the fibromyalgia. I worked with her to uncover all the different areas. And I, honestly, I was a little nervous to work with her because she had been, already been to a functional doctor. And I'm thinking, I'm, what do I know? But I knew I had the resources in the school to help her. And within the time we worked together, she became a different person. She I could not believe the, the changes in her. Whoops, sorry, this is going the wrong way. But you can see that she was, she came to me with all these issues. And within a few weeks, her migraines were gone. Her pain syndrome syndromes symptoms went away within a couple of months. Her sleep was improved. She no longer needs Vicodin for the pain. She's sleeping better. Her energy's better. She's functioning. Her hives are gone. She's off the Zantac and she no longer has the blood sugar spikes and crashes. In fact, she lost about 90 pounds. That's how much her daughter on the bottom right weighs in working with me as well. But more importantly, she has her life back as a mom and she's like a bundle of energy now. And guess how many people she's referred to me? I mean, I can count them. Like her husband's work with me, her brother-in-law's worked with me. Like they, she's just sent me all these people and she's a walking billboard. She looks like a completely different person. So it's so rewarding to help these people and build a practice based on this. And you guys can all do this work. You're, you have such an amazing foundation with the training you've had already. It's going to be much easier for you than it was for me. But I want to show some of these clients I've worked with. This client had, her son had such awful AD. It was, he was disruptive. He couldn't actually, he stuttered quite a bit too. He couldn't get a sentence out. I asked his mother on a scale of one to 10, how bad is his AD? And she rated it a 20. <laughs> mm -hmm. cut, cut three months later, I asked her the same question. She rated it a two. So you can imagine the changes that this kid had. His teachers all thought he was being drugged and he in fact wasn't. He's just able to pay attention in school, able to do his work. And he's just a normal kid now. And she can pay attention to her other children now too, which is really important. She has two other kids that were, she felt like she was neglecting them because this one needed so much work. This woman had infertility at age 46. And <laughs> I was a little nervous to take this one on, but within three months she got pregnant and now has a healthy baby boy. We worked with this woman. You can see I work with a lot of skin issues, hives. I work with a lot of this woman. It, they're completely gone now. This vitiligo is a disease Michael Jackson had. I actually help people reverse that. And I have a group program on that too, on how to reverse vitiligo. So it's great because I can sell a group program. The group program now costs $6,000. And I have had put 40 people through it. So you do the math on that of how many people are doing this program. Granted, the labs are included. So we have some costs with that, but but it's just amazing and be able to help people on a like a level like that. And you'll learn how to do group programs as well within this, how to structure them and everything as well. But you can see type two diabetes and fibromyalgia and anxiety and panic. This girl couldn't even, she's going to drop out of college. She couldn't even sleep in her dorm room or go to lectures because she had such panic attacks. Within six weeks, they're gone, completely gone. And she's back in school and functioning and going to her lectures and sleeping in her own dorm room. And then this client here, her A1C, hemoglobin A1C was in, close to seven. Within six months, we dropped it down to 4.6. So she's no longer pre -diabetic. She's no longer diabetic. And her fatty liver went away, her high cholesterol, her joint pain, everything. She lost 75 pounds. So I could go on and on with this, but I just want to let you know that if you decide to do this, you're going to have the confidence in your clinical skills to help people overcome diseases through root cause resolution and figuring out all the root causes is, is just phenomenal because you can undo disease that way. You're going to gain the skill set that very few people in the world possess. I told you I have people all over the world coming to me. I can't even keep up with the demand for it. And you're going to learn through case study after case study and practical application, how to use this knowledge right away. So even though it's a longer term program, you are encouraged after the first class to start using this in your practice. So you can even advise your patients on the table, what, you know, some things that they can do to improve their health, just start using. And then you're going to say, gee, I want to do this on the side as a separate thing where I meet with them for an hour and go through their case review. So you just start using it and they encourage you to do that.
all the time. Jody, before you before you go on to the next slide, Jill has a really good question here. And I know Peter and I certainly can address this. And she asks, when you work with clients, how do you share expectations on treatment planning? I understand everyone is different. When someone pays $10,000, are they working with you and how often for how long how do you how are you doing one on one only or group programs too or are you doing one on one or group programs too which i think you just answered i'm doing both yeah that. so i didn't charge 10,000 when i started I'll, i started charging very little in the beginning but i would say the average practitioner charges between 2 and 300 per session when they're starting okay so that's something you can do if you take a couple like an extra patient a day for doing this i mean it's pretty good money, but it's also helping them on a different level. And like I said, you're going to, you can build and build from there. But I think your question was setting the expectations. So I tell people, and I told Peter and Lisa this, I can't promise you hundred percent resolution of your symptoms. I can't, there may be too much damage with the neurons and you've had this disease for 10 years. I just, I may not be able to do it, but if I can get you 20% better or 50% better or 80% better, people usually have, people will take, I think you guys said to me, I'll take, you were really like, I'll take whatever. I mean, but I usually say to them, if I can get you 80% better, people are usually pretty happy. And that happens sometimes that I can't figure every single thing out, but they are so happy to have worked with me because their symptoms are almost gone. And are nearly complete. And so they're usually very happy, like, especially with vitiligo, that disease that, that the skin depigments, I tell them, listen, you've had it for years. I can't promise you complete resolution, but if we can stop the progression and hopefully repigment a lot of your skin, people are usually very happy. Plus you're preventing other autoimmune diseases because once you get one, you are about 80% more likely to get another autoimmune disease. And you probably all have patients you're working with that have multiple autoimmune diseases. And it's once you get one, it's the immune system that's the problem. It's not the skin. The, the victim is the skin. Your immune system is the issue. And it's going to attack your thyroid. And you would not believe how much Hashimoto's I uncover when I do some follow on lab work, because that's the number one autoimmune disease. But so I just let them know I'm honest with them. I can't, can I help you 100%? Can I promise? Results, I can't, but in my clinical experience, we've seen this or in my school, they showed me a way to overcome this and I'm very confident I can help you. So even if you haven't worked with it before, you can still say, I'm confident I can help you on some level. So you set that expectation in the beginning yeah. and I under, under promise and try to over deliver. And I, yeah, think I can so. attest to that. I know Peter, you can too. You were very clear that there's no guarantees here. And I'll be honest too, I was skeptical because as an acupuncturist, I've had patients come to me with stacks of blood work tests that they've had done and thousands of dollars that they paid to have that blood work and, and they're not any better. <laughs> and so I, I went into this a bit skeptical, except for the fact that like Chinese medicine, what Jody has learned, and I think this word applied, like that word applied in the school of applied functional medicine is what's so critical. Because as I said, like acupuncture, where we have our fire, earth, metal, water, wood, and how everything interacts and interplays, what she's able to do with these tests is show how everything interplays and what things to address first, second, third, prioritized wise. And that's the difference. And she didn't just come at us with a whole bunch of supplements and say, take them all at once. It's like this one, you're going to break open the capsule and you're only going to take a quarter of it for a week. And then, and then you're going to do this. And then this one, you're going to add in. And then this one, you're going to stop. And then this one you're going to do. And Peter's been amazing at doing this. He's got a thing, a, tr a tray of the different times a day. And I thought I was going to have to fill that for him because his hands tremor, but he's invested. I'll let you speak for yourself, Pete. You're doing it. You're doing all the work. Yeah. I think it's one thing to get tests and to get results and to have in information to work with. That's really important. But when the interventions result in tangible, physical, noticeable changes, to me, that's what's been so reinforcing so I'm willing to take five to 10 tablets three or four times a day because I, I have felt the changes and that just falls on itself to where now I'm invested in other areas like going for my walk every day and going to run errands on my own, 
having the energy to do that. That's been really life-changing. Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned that actually. And I just want to say that the supplement piece, I'm going heavy with Peter because he's got a lot of things going on, but true functional medicine is not just giving you a bunch of supplements. You have to spend all this money on supplements every month for the rest of your life. That is not true functional medicine. Right. True functional medicine is going upstream to figure out what is going on with each particular individual person and addressing those imbalances. And we're addressing a lot at once with him because I, I want to be aggressive because he's willing and he's willing to take all these. Not everybody is. So we, with case studies, we study this. What if they're only willing to take three supplements? What are you going to, what are you going to recommend? But my goal for him is to get him off most every supplement so that he's only on a maintenance, maybe a few maintenance supplements that he needs based on his physiology and biochemistry, not to just replace medications with supplements. That's mm -hmm. not doing it justice. So this is temporary. And I'll just, I want to say something we didn't really say because it feels so obvious to us, but it probably isn't to other people is nutrition was the first thing that you went after. You were like, change your diet. These are the things that we, you did a very detailed intake on what we were eating and, and it made adjustments with gluten and all kinds of other things. So the nutrition piece is like the foundation you went over mm -hmm. that. I think someone asked if nutrition was part of school of applied functional medicine training. And there's another question here. Thanks, Jody. Does this training fully revolve around interpreting tests or do you also feel skilled in understanding how to recommend lifestyle changes and supplement treatment plans based purely on symptoms and differential diagnosis? Yeah, great question. So first of all, I, I forgot the first part of that because I wanted to mention something. What was the first question? Does it does this training revolve fully just around testing or are you also yeah, okay, feeling was, skilled was, around recommending lifestyle changes? So yeah, the lifestyle piece, you cannot out supplement your way out of a bad diet. <laughs> just can't you can give someone relief here and there but it's not just explaining to them what to eat because everybody's different depending on what they're presenting with but it's explaining the why behind it and i think that's why i have such good compliance and they encourage that in the school they teach you that but i wanted to mention you can do this without any lab work you can do this with existing lab work. some people might not have the budget to invest in a lot of lab work and when lisa said earlier that they've had people that come with like a binder full of lab work and they're not getting results Oh, that drives me crazy. I know I did a ton of lab work on Peter, but his program includes the lab work. So I'm not charging them any extra on that. And because of the advanced stages of Parkinson's that he was in, I really wanted to be aggressive in figuring things out. But some people don't have the budget for, and you can certainly work without it. And in the school, you were taught to look at everyday annual physical lab work and figure things out there first, and then say, based on this, I want to do this follow-on lab. And there may only be one follow-on lab, or there may be none. But I like that I'm saving you money by looking at, and I'm also, I just, when sometimes people come to me with a binder of lab work and I look at them, I'm like, I never would have done all this lab work. I would have just done this one. This is all I'm looking for. And the, the person said, oh, I'm supposed to do that one next. <laughs> oh my gosh. So functional medicine has a bad rap in a way because they're just telling you to take all this lab, all these labs. And there's one school I know that teaches you like just to do a whole bunch of labs up front, which I, I just don't do for everybody. And I know I don't want to give everyone that impression. I showed you what I saw with Peter because I thought it was fascinating. All the things that we saw that were like, oh my gosh, Markinson. But but I don't always do that. And I I rarely order all those labs. That was, it was kind of fun to have them all with Peter, but it just depends. If it's an autoimmune disease, there's usually two or three labs that I order and that's it. If it's just like acid reflux, I probably don't need any labs. It depends what it is. If it's autism, I go more. If it's ADHD, hardly any. So it, it depends on the level of what they're dealing with. And I'll just um, say that Peter wasn't offered any labs from his neurologist, <laughs> not a single lab. Yeah. And oh, by the way, there's another big functional medicine school that doesn't even teach you everyday annual physical lab work. I spoke to them and they're like, no, we don't teach that. I know that's a big loophole in our, and I'm like, are you kidding me? That's where I start every time. And you can, I can glean so much information from that. I can usually so just give people some ideas for rapid relief right away. And I can, there's just so many things you can glean from that. And you don't always need the follow on functional lab book, but of course you're going to learn that as well. So when you're dealing with advanced Parkinson's, you're going to need to know more, but I want to show you the school of applied functional medicine. This school is the best thing that ever happened to me professionally. Joyce C. Harrison's the, the lead instructor and teacher. She is a chemist by background. She has three 
degrees from MIT. And one of the most brilliant people I know, I think her IQ is like 10,000. She's absolutely brilliant. And she teaches it in a way that makes it easy to understand and implement in your practice. But I want to show you. And we invited her into the group. We invited her into the ABA group. I'm just going to be a spoiler alert. Oh. Uh, and she's agreed to come in next week and give a sample of how functional medicine is, how she uses it. And so I'm like beyond thrilled that she's coming into the group. So yeah. She's like celebrity status now, and she's coming in to talk to you all. And she's going to be talking about the gut brain, the gut pain access. So why does pain ever, most people are coming to you for pain it begins in the gut and she's going to be discussing all that with you all. So I can't wait for her to come in and talk to you about that. So make sure yeah. to mark your calendar. Lisa will give you the dates on that. Yeah, we're setting but it up. There's two semesters and it culminates in AFMC certification. You will actually get the certification. You'll get put in the book. I'll explain that in a minute. But you're going to learn all about disease, how to break it down, how to figure things out. You're going to get an introduction to mapping. I'll explain about that in a minute, but this is my favorite here, the puzzle piecing. You actually get to listen to the teacher do an intake with an actual patient or client and what she did with that person after. I'll explain a little more about that in a minute too, but you're going to learn about nutrients and supplements. So I know not there's no one supplement brand that does everything right. And I understand all about what Lisa was talking about, take a quarter of this supplement. There's a reason for that. I'm ramping him up slowly so he doesn't hurt. So he doesn't have a bad reaction to what we're doing. There's reasons why I ramp them up slowly. And you're going to learn all the details about which brands work better for which conditions and why you're going to, and by the way, in your practice, this can be a big source of income too. I offer my clients a little discount on the supplements, but I do get tools from the supplement companies as well. And I bring in a nice side income from that as well. That alone has more than paid for the school many times over for me. We're also going to learn a detailed dive into lab work and also the mind-body connection. And so you'll get level two of all those courses in the second semester too. But then on the right side here in your first semester, you're going to learn disease begins in the gut. You're going to learn the HPA TG access, the adrenal thyroid. You're going to learn how to reverse metabolic dysfunction. By the way, I average three months to completely reverse type two diabetes and also hypertension usually as well, different heart disease and things like that. You'll in the second semester, you're going to learn all about immune function, loss of tolerance and hypervigilance. This is where you learn asthma allergies, autoimmune diseases like Parkinson's. You're going to learn all about mitochondrial function and cellular metabolism and also toxicity, detoxification, and heavy metals. So these are all issues for Peter. And these are all actually all of these really. And we were able to address all of them. And for myself, just learning that I had high levels of heavy metals in my system. And that was one of the huge drivers for my autoimmune disease going through this school. I am now in full remission for the past seven years from my urticaria, which is just amazing. And I work with a ton of people who have that disease now because I know what to do. That's and um, yeah, there's a lot of people suffering with that. But this is Tracy. And one of the things that I love that she does is these open coaching calls where you or one of your classmates will present a case study. So it's usually a classmate. Not everybody gets to do these. But it's an actual patient from their practice. So you could take a patient you're working with and present them, show the lab work, show the intake forms, and everyone gets to practice and figure out, okay, what would you do for this patient? And Tracy will go through it with you, with that student, and everyone gets to listen and ask questions. And she would, she's then going to say what she would do for that patient, what she would recommend, which supplements, which brands, why, what does she see in the lab work and why? So you're going to get this case practice and there's dozens of these throughout your tenure in the school. And you get to listen to them, the recording too. I listened to these twice because they're so amazing. Like you're just going to learn through case study after case study. And it's not, other schools do not offer this, or there's, an, there's one school that offers this $40,000 for this school. And it's not as good as this school. Cause I have friends who have done both. This school is just, they, like I said, they could charge a hundred thousand dollars for this school. It is the best, most well thought out program there is. But through case study after case study, I've learned how to do this. And then this is my favorite because this was a light bulb moment for me. Tracy presents a case from her own practice. You get to listen to the intake that she does with that actual client. So it's recorded from years past and you get to hear the questions she's asking and what she would do. And then she does a 
two hour webinar after on what she did for that patient and how she got them better, what interventions she did, what, what she saw in the lab work, et cetera, et cetera, what follow on lab work she got and what she saw there. And so you learn, like I, this was like, for me, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing the intake all wrong. I didn't know the right questions to ask. I didn't know what to do. Now I know what to do. And this is, this is why within the first semester, I already had almost a full practice. By the time I was halfway through the second semester, I already had almost a full practice. It was unbelievable how quickly it happened. Just word of mouth. But then you have this treasure chest. This alone is worth the price of admission because you can look things up like Parkinson's disease and you can look up lupus. You can look up any disease or condition that you want more information on. There's over a thousand entries in this database and you get answers to questions that students have asked previously. So uh, this saves me hundreds of hours of time looking and researching on my own and trying to make sense of the research papers and what makes the most sense. This is Tracy. I swear she eats research papers for breakfast, but she's done all the research and puts it into these posts. So you don't have to spend hours sifting through and trying to figure out what makes sense and what doesn't and what's right and what's motivated by corporate greed and profit or pharmaceutical companies or whatever. You're going to learn really the things to do. So I love this. I use this resource every day in my practice. I also love the clinical collaboration forums. I was actually a forum leader at one point where you have these small groups of students. So you'll be in with other acupuncturists, maybe nurse practitioners, maybe some doctors thrown in a small group together. And you get to, it's led by a graduate of the school and you meet once or twice a month and you can talk about anything. You can talk about your practice, how you're implementing. You can talk about a patient you're working with, talk about your business, whatever you want to talk about, but it, it's awesome. It makes the school feel, doesn't feel like it's online. I feel like you're really get to know the people it's done through Zoom. So these are super fun and Tracy handpicks the leaders. They're really excellent. And then you also get this private practitioner forum. This is not your average Facebook group. This is a Facebook group where there's six monitors that are constantly answering questions. These are part of her clinical education team that, so these people are, you, when you put a question up, you know, you're getting the right answer, not just like people guessing when they are people, they think they know what they're talking about answering questions. This is, you could search key phrases in here and get information. So it's really wonderful about your practice or about a case you're working on. You're working with a patient that's coming in tomorrow and you have a question, put it in there and you'll get answers. You also just want to, you're going to be able to get the most effective through if those of you who like to read instead of watching a webinar, you can do that. So every course has a webinar, but there's also transcripts written. There's a video, there's audio, there's shareable slides. You can use these slides in your actual practice to present. And I have brought slides up to you guys. I know in our sessions together, I just pop it up on the screen and explain things to you so you understand them. So it saves me lots of time sharing those. I also have these done for you patient handouts where you can put your own logo on it and, or you don't have to, but you can hand them out to your patients on certain topics. So helpful to have everything put together that you feel like you have everything at your fingertips and it just saves you so much time. We also have all kinds of help, customer support help, which is amazing, but custom consults are great because you can meet one-on-one -on -one with a teaching consultant in the school, like a naturopathic doctor, or I'm a teaching consultant too. If you have a patient case you're working on that's really difficult and you need some extra support and you want someone to sit down with you for almost an hour and go through it with you, you can pay. It's like a little bit extra to get that. I have some people that meet with me once a month or once every couple of weeks to go through their patient case with them. And it's great to have that kind of support too. And then you get certification. It's backed by a medical review board and you get put in the directory. The directory itself has more than paid for the school for me because people are searching for a functional medicine practitioner. This comes up in their Google search. They search the area. They wind up working with me. So I've gotten so many referrals from this directory. It's awesome. So talk about an investment. You're going to get your name in this directory and you'll get, get referrals from this, from this directory alone. And then you also can leverage and what they do is they teach you what I do is I've done some group programs and high ticket clients. So I don't have to meet every hour with somebody new. I take a few clients a day, a couple clients a day and I'm done and that's good. You can do learn how to map. So this will save you time. And you're also going to streamline your business to avoid burnout. So in the clinical skills intersemester within the school, they teach you how to do these one-on-one -on -one extensive, extended multi-session 
individual programs. That's what I do with Peter. We meet one-on-one and and I go through the first sessions, 90 minutes, subsequent sessions are about an hour each. And you learn how to structure that and what to do with it. But for those of you who might be in managed care and only have an extra 10 minutes with a patient, or if you're meeting with them and you want to do it that way, you're, you learn how to implement this into your practice. So even if you're just doing this while they're on the table with them and you only have 10 minutes to go through a little bit of their health history with them, you're going to learn how to implement this into your practice. So this might be a stepping stone to do the longer visits, or you might just want to do it this way and more people will come to you because they realize how great you are at what you're doing. So you can do it either way. You can take both of these modules and both of them include how to handle group visits. So that's a big piece of it is how do you structure your group programs? What do you do to do that? There's so much information around that. And it's really great. I know there's some group programs that Lisa's talked about doing for marketing it, but this is even just structuring it. How do you structure your groups and how do you do it? How do you put it all together? So that's a really great part of this as well. I just wanted to show you what a map looks like. This is funny, but you're going to learn how to map out each patients so that you can figure things out, especially if you're doing a longer visit with them, you take the time to do this, but it's like easier to go back and pick up the map. I have a map for Peter right here and I can look through and it's like a summary of what's going on with him. And I know this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but I can say, okay, this person ate a lot of swordfish. Maybe they have mercury toxicity. So that's something that I'm suspecting that could lead to these oxalates here. So I'm thinking of all these things that could be happening with this person. He had alopecia. Actually, his hair is growing back. So this is super exciting for him. He's already seeing some peach fuzz coming back in with his hair growth. This is Peter. That's not Peter. No, that's not Peter. No, I just want to be clear. I have Peter's map over here. No, (laughs) this is not Peter. But but that looks very Chinese medicine-y to me. That's, we look at how all the things interact and you're getting at the root. You're always trying to get at the root of the problem and look at three steps earlier into the actual symptom and how it has expressed itself. And that's what I love because, uh, sorry, Jody, but I just think acupuncturists are the smartest people on the planet. I just do. (laughs) I think you are. I I think that the way that these fit together, it's just a perfect match. And quite honestly, I've said this to people before and I frightened Peter a little bit because I was thinking about enrolling in the school of applied functional medicine, (laughs) but I'm at the end of my career in terms of my acupuncture practice. And I'm actually getting ready to close it and do some other fun things. But if I was earlier in my career, there's no doubt about it. I'd be in this training program mainly because I know I have five years to finish it. That's like a key point for me in that you said it's like a minimum of two years, but knowing that I could finish before two, but you'd have to be doing it like really full time. But Um, knowing that I could make money, I could start earning an income from it and start paying for itself, knowing that I could make that back each month just by offering it to people initially with lab work and that kind of stuff. Because I have, like I said, I have patients who come in all the time and they want the lab work. They want to see what their numbers are. They want to understand how they all fit together and they want to feel better. They just want to, they want it. They don't mind paying for supplements. Full script is what you're using. It's what we use. It's just an easy way to, to get people the supplements that they need. And then they just need direction on what to take, when to take it and what to look for in terms of changes. So they want this, they want to feel better. They do. It definitely. So if you want to get in on this cohort, you can do so by putting down $50 for an application and sending in the application. Those of you listening today, I believe there might be a cutoff today for a lower price. It goes up gradually as they get closer to the actual enrollment cutoff. So the sooner you apply, the sooner you lock in a lower rate. And it can be like, I think like 500 bucks a month. It's not a lot. You get one client that pays you $300 a visit. You're almost there right? And they come twice a month, you're there, right? It's $600 a month. So $50, a a $50 application fee locks in your price, even if you decide not to enroll like right away, like you want to wait a little while and then enroll like next week or something. Yeah. There's only two cohorts a year. There's March and September. There are so many acupuncturists jumping on and getting in this. You don't want to be left behind. Trust me on this. It's like, there are a lot of them doing this work. And who would you rather go to just acupuncturists or someone who really understands how to get to the root causes of your disease and reverse them? 
So it, it adds so much of a better element to your practice, so much more depth of knowledge to your practice. And you, those of you who are struggling with your business, if any of you are, this can take it to a to entirely different level. I'm at the age where I retire at some point. I can travel anywhere and do this online. I'm not locked into a clinic, right? I can do this anywhere. So I just took a couple of weeks, went to Florida and I could take a client there if I wanted to. I could go wherever I want in the world and do this work, which is just amazing. It allows me a lot more freedom and flexibility. I can go visit my kid out in the West Coast near you guys and, uh, and do that. But anyway, let me just show you a few more things just to wrap up. So I did, I'm doing some, some streamlining. It's certainly the, the tools in the school have allowed me to. I use the treasure chest. I use the handouts. I use the Facebook group. So I save thousands of hours of my own research. I'm able to charge more for my one-on-one -on -one sessions and I can add more practitioners. That's another way to leverage. So I do the initial session, hand them off to another SAFM graduate. I would not hire anyone unless they are educated at SAFM because they speak the same language as me. I know they understand things the way I understand them. And it's hard to find graduates that aren't already full in their practice. <laughs> it's not easy, but, but I found a few. Anyway, and you're also going to learn using group programs for maximum impact. But I just want to show you one more case study. This woman came to me with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and she wasn't able to get on top of it. She'd been to doctors. Her doctor actually referred her to me because this doctor seen me do work with other, other patients of hers. And she keeps sending me all these patients. <laughs> She wanted me to join her practice at one point, but I'm too busy to do that. So she just sends me patient after patient. She said, working with me was like an extreme college course in self-care and nutrition. And she, she has sent several friends to me that friend, one of her friends sent her son to me on and on her son had asthma, severe asthma and her friend's son. And that's gone now too, hundred percent gone. He's like a new kid. He can play hockey again. This is one of my favorite cases. This guy was so skeptical coming to me. He had severe psoriatic arthritis, couldn't even tie his shoe up in bed with the pain. You could see this is his thumb here, how bad it was. And within five months, we were able to reverse it. And now this guy used to just grunt in the sessions with me. And I was like almost dreading to see him again because you know he wasn't getting results right away. And about the five month mark, he told me, I asked him, how does it going? I was almost dreading seeing him. And he says, I said, how's your psoriasis? He says, it's gone. I said, what do you mean it's gone? He says, it's completely gone. He's off the prednisone, no more psoriasis. And I couldn't believe it. And now he's told, oh, he's from Idaho and he's told a whole bunch of people in Idaho about me. So I'm working with all these people in this small town in Idaho because of this one guy, but he's pain-free, which is just amazing. And he's able to do his woodworking again. But this client just came to me. She just referred her son to me. She had really bad rosacea and she an ocular rosacea. And I asked her, how's your rosacea? And she said, it's still gone after two years. It's just amazing. And she was referring her son to me. I said, do you mind writing it up for me? And she did. We were able to help her with her gut and her digestion. And within a few months, her face was clear within it's been several years now. She's remained symptom free. So she had, she had a real bad case of it. But anyway, you all can focus on symptom suppression and the diagnose and prescribe model. I know most of you aren't in that model, but you're by offering acupuncture, you're relieving symptoms. You're probably helping. You're definitely helping with a lot of things. But if you want to really get to all the root causes and start getting referral after referral and better patient outcomes, functional medicine has been proven in JAMA to have better patient outcomes than Western medicine, have more and more opportunities come your way and potentially a lot more financial reward. I really re recommend this. And you could be in the present here and just continue on the way you're going. And that's fine. If you're getting more and more frustrated with taking patient after patient, that could be happening where, you know, you you don't see a way out, just dollars per hour kind of thing. And you're getting left behind here. Or if you want to start learning functional medicine, implementing in your practice, having more and more people come to you, being able to raise your rates, offer more services, group programs, et cetera. I think this is the way to go. And I think none of you will regret this. It's been, I have people coming to me that I've told about the school and they thank me and hug me and say it's changed their life. And I know it can change yours as well. The next steps, if you want to do this is to apply now, the prices get higher as enrollment fills up, check it out. Lisa will post the link. Please do use her link. And it, it actually costs you the same and it helps her offset the cost of running this program. If you want to use that or mention her name, when you sign up, 
So I'm happy to talk to you about it. it. I wish someone had guided me through when I was going through the school before I signed up for something like this. I wish someone had told me about it years ago because I would have, I would have done it. And I'm happy to guide any of you through or put you in touch with people that have been through other programs and this program. One of my employees has been to five functional medicine schools. She's a nurse practitioner. And I asked her which is the best. She said, by far, SAFM is the best. And she's paid a lot more for some of the other ones. It's just because they give you case study after case study, awesome resources. The classes are laid out so well. We actually have a sample class you can take if, you've if you're not familiar with the school. Lisa, I'll send you the link for the thyroid class. We'll send you that so you could take a free class on thyroid. Make sure you like her teaching style. That's one of the questions on the application is, do you, have you, are you familiar with Tracy? Have you taken her class before? So make sure you've done that before you apply. Even if you just listen for an hour to the class, at least you'll have some familiarity with her and make sure you, you enjoy her class. But it's, like I said, I don't think you'll ever look back and you'll have a skill set that frankly, very few people on the planet have. You'll be able to help people on an entirely different level and put diseases into remission. I remember we, we actually had a patient or client a number of years ago who was on the list for a kidney, not kidney, liver transplant list. Her liver enzymes are off the charts and she was going to, she was in stage four liver disease and going to go into liver failure without the transplant. She decided to work with us while she was on the transplant list to see if there's anything we could do. She is now off the transplant list within four months of working with her liver enzymes returned to normal. Wow. Talk about how much is a liver transplant? How much would that have cost the medical system? Was it $150,000, maybe more? And here she is working with us and having a normal liver. I talk, and what about that woman who is infertile? Go through infertility treatments. It's a fortune. And unfortunately, those things can cause cancer long-term too with all the hormones they stick in you to get you pregnant. But, uh, but anyway, so I know there's a bunch of questions here. I'm happy to talk to any of you. Are there any, any that are coming up here? There was a question about autism, I believe. Before you mm -hmm. answer that though, again, I want to just do another little pitch for as acupuncturists, we're trained in Chinese medicine and we have a lot of herbal formulas that are great for detoxification and are for healing the gut. But what, but when you have the lab work that patients can see, so they can see what's wrong and they can see the numbers changing. And then we have the added benefit of being able to prescribe really powerful Chinese herbs and do the herbal medicine with it. I just think the combination is so powerful. And there are really are just a handful of acupuncturists who are getting this and are doing it. I'm so glad they are. I'm going to keep inviting you into the group, Jody, because I was not a big believer in functional medicine, again, because of my experience of people bringing a bunch of paperwork in the dollars, the labs and not getting results. So to see that you are willing to come in here and teach us why the School of Applied Functional Medicine is so beneficial. And for, I think the ABAers in here, thank you for letting Peter and I give you our very personal experience. I think sometimes it's nice to see a behind the scenes sort of thing so that you get an idea of what we went through as Peter as a patient, but also as fairly educated people who tried other kinds of things before meeting Jody, hopefully that gives you some motivation to know what your patients are going through and what you personally, super smart people can bring to the table and really the amount that you charge people. No, you don't want to do that. You don't have to, but I want you to make a good living. I want you to be happy with what you're doing. I want you to love your livelihood. <laughs> That's my motto and really enjoy that. So yeah, I think like this you, gives Lisa. you a flexibility to do that. And like you, Lisa, honestly, I'm 58 and I do want to retire eventually, but I'll probably work two days a week, cut back, and I'll be able to make as much in as more than most acupuncturists make. I'm only working two, two days a week instead of all those, all those days. And if you're doing group programs, you meet with them once or twice a month. And in that time, the hours per, the dollars per hour you're making is huge. So that alone is a, a huge thing that you can do as well, but you'll have the confidence. And that's one thing it's given me is the confidence. When somebody comes to me, I can say to them, like I said to Peter and Lisa, I'm confident I can help you. And I just remember them looking at each other, what? <laughs> but I am, I'm confident I can help them. And that is just an amazing place to be. No more imposter syndrome. I just feel like I know what I'm doing. 
I'm good at what I do. And it doesn't matter what they come to me with. If you're asking me about autism, we've seen this go into remission. It's a huge amount of toxicity out there that's causing this. And uh, gut issues are huge with autism as well. One of the patients or clients in this case that we're working with is 22 years old that we started working with him. His mother cannot believe the difference. And I wasn't even sure I was honest with her. I said, he's 22. I'd rather work with him when he's three and he's first diagnosed There's things we can do. I don't know. I'm going to do the best we can with it. And she has seen such incredible improvement with him, his engagement with people, his ability to work, his ability, no more anger outbursts. All these things are just like dramatic dramatically different. So that's definitely something that you'll learn how to do at this school. Talk about a market that said autism's up 700%. Even if you just work with diabetics, half of Americans are at least half are insulin resistant, pre-diabetic or diabetic. And you just have a huge market there. Heart disease, number one killer. And just Parkinson's, do a course. Yeah. Um, Parkinson's. Degenerative <laughs> things. So yeah. Definitely on the increase too. And there's so much that yeah. you can do. Jody, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I really appreciate you coming in here. If you don't mind, if you could pop in the group, I know a lot of people will see this recording and they'll, and they'll ask questions in this thread. So if you don't mind popping in every once in a while and answering questions, the link to the program is in this thread. Don't wait on this. If you're motivated to do this, you will never look back. We have retreats every fall or every spring. You can come say hi to me when at the retreat and tell me that you've done this, but you can take study blocks and do this work in just a few hours a week and take longer to finish it, or you can finish it in just a couple of years. Totally worth the investment. Don't get left behind on this trend. There's nothing like it and no no greater superpower to have. If you got into this work because you really wanted to help people and this will help you do it on an entirely different level. It's the School of Applied Functional Medicine. Lisa will give you all the link and I hope you all decide to apply and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Great. And thank, thank you, you so much, Peter, for coming. Thank you for having me, Lisa. I so appreciate it.